So if we uh, just explore this possible future, what 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 is the thing that humans do that's most special in uh, in mathematics? So that you could see AI uh, not cracking for a while. So in inventing new theories. So coming up with new conjectures versus uh, proving the conjectures. Right. Building new abstractions, new representations, maybe uh, an AI turn style with uh, seeing new connections between disparate fields. That's a good question. Um, I, th I think the nature of what mathematicians do over time has changed a lot. Um, you know, um, so a thousand years ago, mathematicians had to compute the date of Easter uh, and there was really complicated uh, calculations. You know, but it's all automated, been automated for centuries. Uh, we don't need that anymore. You know, they used to navigate to do spherical navigation, spherical trigonometry to navigate how to get from from um, the old world to the new. Or something like very complicated calculations again, we've been automated. Um, you know, even a lot of undergraduate mathematics, even before AI, um, like Wolfram Alpha, for example, uh, is, is not a language model, but it can solve a lot of undergraduate level math tasks. So on the computational side, verifying routine things like having a, a, a problem and um, and say, here's a problem in partial differential equations. Could you solve it using any of the 20 standard techniques? Um, and mm -hmm. they will say, yes, I've tried all 20, and here are the 100 different permutations, and, and here's my results. Um, and th that type of thing, I think it will work very well. Um, type of scaling to, once you solve one problem to, to make the AI attack 100 adjacent problems. Um, the things that humans do still, yeah, so, so where the AI really struggles right now um, is knowing when it's made a wrong turn. Um, that it can say, oh, I'm going to solve this problem. I'm going to split up this problem into, um, into these two cases. I'm going to try this technique. And um, sometimes if you're lucky and it's a simple problem, it's the right technique and you solve the problem. And sometimes it will, it will get, it will have a problem. It would it would propose an approach which is just complete nonsense. Um, and, but like, it looks like a proof. Um, so this, this is one annoying thing about LLM generated mathematics. So, so um, yeah. we, we've, we've had human generated mathematics as a very low quality. Um, uh, like, you know, so submissions for people who don't have the formal training and so forth. But if a human proof is bad, you can tell it's bad pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. It makes really basic mistakes. But the AI generated proofs, they can look superficially flawless. Uh, and it's partly because that's what the reinforcement learning has actually trained them to do, uh, to, to make things, to, to produce text that looks like um, uh, what is correct, which for many applications is good enough. Um, uh, so the, the errors are often really subtle, and then when you spot them, they're, they're really stupid. Um, like you know, they, like no human would have actually made that mistake. Yeah, it's actually really frustrating in the programming context because I, I program a lot, and mm -hmm. yeah, when a human makes when uh, low quality code, there's something called code smell, right? You, mm, you yes. can tell, you yeah. can tell yeah. immediately, like uh, okay, yeah, yeah. there's yeah. signs. But with with AI generate code, it, older this. and then you're right. Yeah. Eventually, you find an obvious dumb thing that just looks yeah. like good code. Yeah, so um, it's very tricky to and frustrating for some reason to yeah. <laughs> so have to work. Through. Yeah, so the sense of smell. Okay, there yes. you go. This, yes. this is this is one thing that humans have, um, and there's a metaphor called mathematical smell that yeah. uh, this we it's not clear how to get the AI to duplicate that. Eventually. Um, I mean, so the, the, the way um, Alpha Zero and so forth they make progress on Go and, and chess and so forth is, is, in some sense, they have developed a sense of smell for Go and chess positions. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that this position is good for white, it's good for black. Um, they can't enunciate why, um, but just having that, that sense of smell lets them strategize. So if AIs gain that ability to sort of a sense of viability of certain proof strategies, mm -hmm. so, so you can say, I'm going to try to, to break up this problem into two small subtasks, and they can say, oh, this looks good. The, the, the two tasks look like they're simpler tasks than, than your main task, and they still got a good chance of being true. Um, so this is good to try. Or no, you've, you've, you've made the problem worse because each of the two subproblems is actually harder than your original problem, which is actually what normally happens if you try a random uh, thing to try. You normally, you actually, it's very easy to transform a problem into an even harder problem. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do you problem, transform to a simpler problem. Um, yeah, so if they can pick up a sense of smell, then they could maybe start competing with uh, uh, human level mathematicians. So, so this is a hard question, but not competing, but collaborating. Yeah. If, okay, hypothetical. If I gave you an oracle that was able to do some aspect of what you do and you could just collaborate with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. would that oracle, what would you like that oracle to be able to do? Would you like it to uh, maybe be a verifier, like check 
mm -hmm. do the code smell like you're yes yeah. uh a professor Tao, this is the correct this is a good this is a pr promising fruitful direction yeah 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 or or would you like it to uh generate possible proofs and then you see which one is the mm -hmm. right one um or would you like it to maybe generate different representation, different, totally different ways of seeing this problem? Yeah, I think all of the above. Um, a, a lot of it is we don't know how to use these tools because it, it's a paradigm that it's, it's not. Um, yeah, we have not had in the past assistants that are competent enough to understand complex instructions mm -hmm. um, that can work at massive scale, but are also unreliable. <laughs> uh, like it's, it's an interesting, uh, a bit unreliable in subtle ways, whereas we was providing sufficiently good output. Um, it's an interesting combination. Um, you know, I mean, you have re you have like graduate students that you work with who are kind of like this, but not at scale. Um, you know, and 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 we had previous software tools that um, can work at scale, but but very narrow. Um, so we have to figure out how to how to use. Um, I mean, um, so Tim Gower, like you, you mentioned, he actually foresaw, like in, in 2000, he was envisioning what mathematics would look like in in actually two and a half decades. <laughs> uh, and That's funny. Yeah, he, he wrote in his in his article uh, like a, a, a hypothetical conversation between a mathematical assistant of the future um, and himself, you know, he's trying to solve a problem and they would have, have a conversation that he, uh, they, sometimes the human would, would propose an idea and the AI would, would uh, evaluate it. Uh, and sometimes the AI would propose an idea, um, and uh, and sometimes a computation was required, and the AI would just go and say, "Okay, I've, I've checked the, the 100 cases needed here," or um, uh, the first uh, uh, you you said this is true for all n. I've checked it for n up to 100, um, and it looks good so far. Or hang on, there's a problem at n equals 46. And so just a free form conversation where you don't know in advance where things are going to go, but just based on on I think ideas get proposed on both sides, calculations get proposed on both sides. I've had conversations with AI where I say, okay, let's, we're going to collaborate to, to solve this math problem. And it's a problem that I already know, know the solution to. So I, I try to prompt it. Okay, so here's the problem. I, I suggest using this tool. And it, it'll find this, this lovely argument using a completely different tool, which eventually goes you know, into the weeds and say, no, 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 try using this. Okay, and it might start using this and then it'll go back to the tool that I wanted to do to, to before. Um, and like you have to keep railroading it um, onto the path you want. And I, I could eventually force it to give the proof I wanted. Um, but it was like herding cats, um, mm -hmm. like, and the amount of personal effort I had to take to not just sort of prompt it, but also check its output because it, like, a lot of what it looked like is going to work. But I know there's a problem on nine seventeen, and basically arguing with it, <laughs> um, like, it was more exhausting than doing it uh, unassisted. So, like, it, but that's the current state of the art. I wonder if there's there's a phase shift that happens to where it's no longer feels like herding cats and. Maybe you'll surprise us how quickly that comes. You know? I, I believe so. Um, so in formalization, I, I mentioned before that it takes ten times longer to formalize a proof than to write it by hand. With these modern AI tools, is uh, and also just better tooling. The, the, um, the lean um, um, developers are doing a great job adding more and more features and making it user friendly. It's going from nine to eight to seven. Okay, no big deal. But one day it will drop below one, um, and that's a phase shift. Because suddenly um, it makes sense when you write a paper to to write it in lean first, uh, or through a conversation with AI who's generating lean um, on the fly with you, and it becomes natural for journals to accept. Uh, you know, maybe they'll offer uh, expedite refereeing. You know, that, uh, if if a paper has already been formalized in in, in lean, um, they'll just ask the referee to comment on on the significance of the results and how it connects to literature, and not worry so much about the correctness. Because um, that's been certified. Um, papers are getting longer and longer in mathematics, and actually it's harder and harder to get good ref refereeing for um, the, the really long ones, unless they're really important. Uh, it, it is actually an, an issue which, and the formalization is coming in at just the right time for this to be. And the easier and easier it gets because of the tooling and all the other factors, right. then you're going to see much more like math lib will grow right. potentially exponentially. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a it's a it's a virtuous uh, cycle. Okay. I mean, one phase shift of this type that happened in the past was uh, the adoption of LaTeX. Mm -hmm. So, so LaTeX is this typesetting language that all mathematicians use now. So, in the past, people used all kinds of word processors and typewriters and, and whatever. But at some point, LaTeX became easier to use than all other competitors, and that people would just switch. You know, within a few years, like, like it was just a dramatic um, phase shift.